Hello, Africa. You welcome to another episode of African Students' Voices. My name is Jemima Daladem Duchi. So today we aim to explore how the educational um, institutions are rapidly um, adapting to the new norms of the um, industry. So today we are also looking at exploring strategies, initiatives, and equally focusing on practices that bridge the gap between the academia and equally the industry, ensuring that students do not only graduate um, with a strong foundation, but also are well equipped to thrive through their chosen um, career. I have here with me lovely guests whom I'm going to introduce after the break, but you can also follow the conversation on our social media handles, Association of African Universities on Facebook and YouTube. We will be right back after the break. Welcome back from the break. And if you just joined us, this is African Student Voices on AAU TV. And AAU TV is the voice of higher education in Africa. Today, we are discussing preparing the students for the industry or job market. And as I said earlier, I have here with me lovely guests whom I'm going to introduce. So I have here with me Ms. Prisla Amwa from Unimark GIG, a past student, and she offered journalism. She was also the chief editor for GIJ's News Online. And I also have here with me a gentleman by name Elikem Gamo from the University of Cape Coast. And he was also the head of research committee for USAC. You are both welcome. Thank you okay. very much. So today we are discussing or we are talking about preparing the students for the job market or let me say the industry. Yes. But then let's, I mean, not to go deeper, but let's start with, I mean, the topic. We, we hear industry, preparing the students for the industry. When we say industry, first of all, what comes into your mind? When someone tells you, okay, we are preparing students for the industry, where which people are in the, are the industry? Who are the industry? I'll start from you, Eli Kim. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Jemima, and my greetings to your lovely audience. So, okay. um, my name is Eli Kim. Hey, sorry, yeah. I said Eli Kim. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Eli Kim, sorry. Yeah, so when you're talking about the industry, the industry cuts across board depending mm -hmm. on the group of people you are talking to. Yeah. So, if you are so basically, it just means the working force. Mm -hmm. So you are preparing people for the industry, meaning you are preparing them for the future. You are preparing them to join the workers. Mm -hmm. So that is what it means to prepare people for, for the industry. And then it goes a long way, even from the genesis of education, that is kindergarten. Mm -hmm. What do you teach the child? So mm -hmm. you realize that the kind of education we have in Ghana is different yeah. from what they have in China and what they have in Europe. That's so true. and the European kind of teaching prepares you for the practical way of things. Mm -hmm. um, and then in Africa, I can speak that of Ghana, yeah. we prepare you for the theoretical ways of things. And this mm -hmm. is evidence in um, the science and math quiz that we usually mm -hmm. see. And even sometimes um, participants of search competitions coming back to report that, okay, when they go internationally, mm -hmm. um, the kind of things they see there yes. is not what they have, they here. have here. They can draw and label the human parts, mm -hmm. but in reality, they don't they know those things. Okay. And then in the university as well, we all know what an atom is. We all know what plasma, yeah. polymers, and the likes are. But the question mm -hmm. is, have we ever seen, seen plasma and the likes before? Exactly. We still exist in a university or in a world where university students are still writing quotes on papers, and we mm -hmm. expect them to work. Mm -hmm. So preparing them for the industry goes, it's, it's, it's a yes. very broad broad topic where um, academia and the industry have mm -hmm. to merge and then discuss. Okay. Yeah, so it's something that I'm hoping that by the end of this conversation we'll be able to Achieve. talk more about. Okay, I think you made mention of academia and then industry. Do you think there is a connection between these two people? Not at all in Ghana, but for some programs in some universities, um, I can say yes. Mm -hmm. So, example, Ashasi University is doing very well. Yeah. I can speak for Ashasi that um, most of the their, their curriculum, they usually engage um, the industry, not mm -hmm. just the local industry. And Ashasi just, don't just prepare students for the local market. They prepare yeah. students for the, the international, international market. market. So when you meet an Ashasi student in an in that, when you meet an Ashasi student, I don't want to use the word industry again. Mm -hmm. If you meet an Ashasi student in, in the workforce, in, in the, workforce mm -hmm. the way they work is different from how um, anyone from any university. And how can you tell that? Okay, so um, 
the kind of way they do their things. Mm -hmm. So example, um, there is a system called the computer science and engineering guys will get to know mm -hmm. this. There's a system called Agile. Okay. So it's a work frame. Mm -hmm. Now, most university students don't know what don't an Agile system that. is. But you meet, so most engineering students will be talking about um, project managers and the likes. Mm -hmm. but, not, but an Ashasi guy will talk about a scrum master. Mm -hmm. Then you start asking yourself, what is a scrum oh, is master? Mm -hmm. Then the Ashasi guy breaks it down for you. You enter the big market, then you get to know that, no, even before the project manager, yeah. there's a scrum master, someone mm -hmm. who manages a lot of things. Yeah. Now, a uh, system such as that, okay, there's someone called a boss, mm -hmm. and that person allocates and gives you tax. In a chassis, they don't they don't tell you that this is your tax. Mm -hmm. You see it and you solve it. Okay. So that's a kind so of automatically so, you have your tax. Yeah, out. and that is how the industry the industry outside happens to work. Okay. But in Ghana, okay. they call you. You are supposed to do A, B, C, D. Yeah. And then outside, you are supposed to be reporting every day on your work. Mm -hmm. So there's something called, um, it's called stand-up. Mm -hmm. It's a 15, maximum of 15 minutes. Okay. And in that meeting, everybody is supposed to outline what they have done, mm -hmm. the impediments they had, and what they'll be doing. Okay. So an Ashasi student, before going home, he knows that the next day, he has to do something do to report. That, mm -hmm, on it. So Ashasi, for, as an investor, I can speak for, does mm -hmm. such things. Now in UCC, for instance, too, I can also speak for the business school. Yeah. Um, I know they are doing a very great work there, trying mm -hmm. to um, collaborate with industry, getting to know the technologies that they are using in the industry. Okay. So currently they are um, trying to teach um, the students there a bit of the data science and financial mm -hmm. analysis. So those are the collaborations they have had. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to cut you, but we'll come to the collaborations. Okay. But let me move to my lady here let's talk about the industry what i mean share your thoughts with me on what i mean like what i mean what the industry environment consists of well um anything right yeah. yeah i think you said a lot and it was very insightful so in a layman's language uh, the industry basically referred to the working environment to the real world mm -hmm. so it's um a lot of us have the notion that university delve more into theory. Yeah. So when we talk about the industry, mm -hmm. then we are looking at the working force. Yeah. Putting what you've been learned or what you've learned. Yeah, what you've learned into practice. Yes. So the practical aspect of the theory mm -hmm. is what we kind of term as the industry. industry. Okay. So basically that's what an industry is. And I think Blame has done justice to that. So. Okay, but do you also think the academia and then the industry, I mean, they, they have that connection together currently, looking at our academia, and then looking at the industry in this um, current age? Well, it will be difficult to um, say that because then you have to look at um, the academia from which continent or from which country mm -hmm. because the educational policies for every country differs. Mm -hmm. There are some educational policies that are in line with that of the industry. Yeah. And sometimes I would say the, um, the ownership and then the, um, the running of the school. Okay. Alec Plem made mention of is it Asashi yeah, or Asashi Asashi University. University? It's a private school. Yeah, yes. You yeah. can't compare that university to a government, a government school, school because yeah. the way it's being run is it's different. different. Yeah. So what is being done in the government school, you, you won't find can't. it in the private school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can't outline or say that, oh, academia is, is the same thing or is in line with the industry. Mm -hmm. It's way, like it differs. We mm -hmm. might be in the same country, but what's, Let's say UCC is doing, doing is different from what they are not doing at Amy. all, or GIJ is not doing, doing at Amy. all. So the academia and industry, we can say they are like two sides of the same coin, mm -hmm. but in a way they really they are, differ depending yeah. on the country okay. that you are looking at. Okay, so now let's talk about our current educational system. I think you made mention of Ashasa doing a lot. UCC, GIJ, we, I mean, all of them are not doing the same thing, but. Yeah they are equally doing something different in their own unique ways. Yeah. So do you think the educational system currently, I mean, is helping or preparing students for the industry? I'll still be on you, Priscilla. Yeah. Um, I'll say no and to some extent, mm -hmm. but not entirely no. 
So let's take GIJ. I mean, that's where I came from. So yes. I think. Okay. Uh, so with GIJ, they mostly do that of theory. Mm -hmm. Don't teach theory to a student and expect the student to go into the industry and do and well. Be able to do well. Mm -hmm. The only way a student can do well in the industry is to do have some form of practical experience. That's true. The industry is profit and loss. Mm -hmm. So a company will only employ someone who will be able to add to its profit, yeah. not to increase the loss. the loss. You are teaching a student theory. How do you expect the student to go and do well in the industry? Mm -hmm. Then when they find themselves in the industry, that's when they struggle. Mm -hmm. They will tend to change course. So you see a lot of students from these schools will be like, mm -hmm. oh, I did journalism, but after journalism, I think I want to just do business yeah. because you can't survive because you lack the, um, the skills, skills yes, to be able to survive in the industry. Mm -hmm. And out there, business is more of it's a competitive field. You can't be weak in it. Mm -hmm. As such as students yes. will do well yes. in the industry as compared to that. A of a GIG student, student or any other government institution. Okay. I'm not trying to cut you, but sure. you are talking about the fact that, I mean, in GIG, there are a lot of practical aspects, sorry, the theoretical yeah, aspects. Theory. And a university like Ashase <clears throat> goes more into the practical aspects. So let That's me ask amazing. you, what do you think the institutions or the universities can do yeah. to help align their, I mean, the courses to meet the demands of the job market? Okay, so the first thing I'll touch on will be collaboration. Okay. In education, collaboration is a very big key. It's a factor. When you take collaboration out of education, mm -hmm. then, sorry, in quotes, you are teaching, I don't say nonsense, but mm -hmm. you are teaching something abstract that students can really grasp. Relate. Mm -hmm. So it, with an institution like, say, JID or any other institution that is solely depending on theory, mm -hmm. Invite media organizations, yeah. invite people in the industry, mm -hmm. hold seminars, hold webinars, organize something for your student to learn the practical aspect. At least they have a feel of what to expect when they enter into the industry. Yeah. So when they are going, they are not going as aliens. Mm -hmm. They are already familiar with what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So say GIJ, since it's a journalism school, is I will have a collaboration with media house like TV3. Mm -hmm. So within uh, the second semester of your education, yes. it's compulsory for you to go to TV3 mm -hmm. and do your internship. Yes. So then you learn the practical, the practical aspect. aspect. You apply it. your theory. Mm -hmm. You learn, you unlearn. Because I believe as human beings, we learn and unlearn each and every time. Yeah, that's so true. collaboration is a very key um, stakeholder when it comes to education. Mm -hmm. It's a bridge so, that is between yeah. education and industry. So we have when, to... when schools are able to infuse that, I think okay. we won't be producing book, um, 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 how should I say, <laughs> theoretical students, but yeah. practical, practical students. students. Students who are able to think, be on yeah. their feet. And I mean, innovations. I think okay. that will help African countries to move far when it comes to the competition that we have in Okay. Some of the industry. I think I, I'm sorry, but I still have to be on you. Yeah. I think you spoke about um, I mean, getting collaborative. I mean, collaborating with industries yeah. and then I mean, getting people to go for internships, have their hand skills, um, practicals of yeah. whatever they yeah. are doing. Yeah. Sometimes some engineering schools, sorry, engineering um, student, you go to school, you. I mean, have the hands-on skills as an engineering student. Yeah. You get the hands-on skills. I mean, you know how to practice. And then you come out and you need jobs. You need projects to be on. And a government has to build roads. Government has to build infrastructure for a country. And the government would actually want to go outside and bring foreigners into its country to actually, I mean, hold yeah. such forth. Yeah. So in as much as I mean, the school will do their best. I think the, the problem is not just from the school. There exactly. are other um, stakeholders that are involved in this. So how can you, sorry, so how do you think that um, bridge can also be, I mean, we can close that gap equally? When it comes to government policies, it's a huge something on it. Exactly. Only. But I think that the only thing that could help us 
is the educational sector, the mm -hmm. Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. They are there to represent the educational body. Mm -hmm. All of us can be at there. the decision-making center. Yes. So they are there. So we have students like engineers from, you know, they've learned how to construct roads, bridge. Yeah. So they are out of school. Government will make a policy that there is a road that needs to be constructed. Mm -hmm. With that, let's just give to this particular school. Mm -hmm. And when doing that, that will even foster competition and let schools yeah, be on their schools. toes. Because yeah. everybody or every institution will like for their student to construct a major road and then mm -hmm. give a name to their uh, school. Exactly. exactly. So if the ministry is able to stand on its feet and stop, I mean, there are certain achievements that are not to be applauded. Mm -hmm. Recently, we are talking about students innovating coal ports. Yeah. Whilst other <laughs> students are, I mean, coming up with AI machineries that mm -hmm. are doing excellent jobs, we are applauding coal ports. Mm -hmm. Why are we going as a country, especially Ghana? Come okay. on. <laughs> so the ministry should be able to, you know, work hand in hand with the yeah. government, yeah. push for something. If you are able to push, I'm sure the teaching institutions, the national, um, um, the the teaching institutions will also push for such a uh, sorry agenda. Okay. So if that is incorporated, I'm mm -hmm. sure. It will foster Scarborough, competition and then I think I'm, I, I believe in Africa we have great minds, mm -hmm. but, but we just we lack just support not. from the government. That's the reason why. Okay. Yeah, um, I think you have a lot to say. Yeah. Okay, you want to disagree yeah. with something. No, no, not necessarily to disagree, but just an add-on. She made a lot of um, cases out of that. But I think um, the fact that the government will want to give contracts to those outside just um, it's just mirroring a lot of things. Number yeah. one, mm -hmm. um, it means we don't even trust our engineers. Uh, people. We don't, aside trusting them as engineers, we don't even trust their foundation, their fundamental. Mm -hmm. That is exactly. yeah. the rock on which they were trained. Exactly. So we sent them to school to go and learn the big books. Mm -hmm. Yet still, people graduate and they can't even man produce a stool. Yeah. So how do you give a big bridge to someone who, who for his four At years in, in university, two mm -hmm. years, uh, sorry, four years degree, first degree, two years MPhil and the likes, mm -hmm. they've not been able to construct a bridge. Mm -hmm. They've not done internship. There's no hands on yeah. there. But the challenge is not even that. The major challenge is people just go through the system and become lecturers. Mm -hmm. In Europe, Germany, for you to become a lecturer, you must, um, I don't know the number of years, but I think it's five years. Okay. After going through the process, you mm -hmm. becoming a doctor, or you must have five years experience, experience in the field, recent mm -hmm. five years experience. Okay. If you don't have a recent five years experience in the field, you mm -hmm. cannot become a lecturer. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a difference in someone who has an experience in the thing and teaching you and someone who did, who just did the chew and pour and yeah, coming back yeah. to pour to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If someone is teaching you from experience, yeah. even if the person doesn't know what he's saying, mm -hmm. he definitely knows yeah, what yeah, he's yeah. saying because he has seen, seen it before, it he has experienced, experienced it, it before. And there's no substitute for experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, it all goes down to the educational system, mm -hmm. the entire reform that we need to do. Mm -hmm. Now, aside now let's this- talk about the reform. How do you think we can <laughs> align I mean the our educational system to the job the job market. Break I mean, how can we just collaborate or put these things together and make sure that the graduates that we produce are not just I mean theoretical graduates, but when they are sent to the job market, they will be able to deliver. Break the system. How do we break the system? Collapse everything and, and then rebuild it. it again. Yeah, because um, now we have um, teachers who do not even like ICT. Mm -hmm. um, they just did ICT because they wanted to pass an exams. Yeah. And then probably they read RME or some religious related things and mm -hmm. they are hoping to be in that field. Suddenly they find themselves in the education um, field. Yeah. Then they have to teach ICT. Mm -hmm. How do you expect this, this person to teach? So you end up asking questions like, if you click on the mouse, how does it sound like? <laughs> then they put click, click and the yeah. likes there. 
Okay. Yeah. So we have to break the entire system and work on everybody, parents, government, students, because mm -hmm. some students are even in the classroom and yeah. they don't even have the mindset of a student. The system can be working. Everybody will be active. But, be working. But if the student doesn't know he is a student, mm -hmm. so from the beginning, the students have to know and understand the essence of education. Mm -hmm. Why am I here? Yes. If the person, so I, 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 I find this very difficult when um, initially, when people say they are going to a technical school and yeah. there's this perception that, yeah, it's because his mathematics is not good. Mm -hmm. because Yeah, he's finding that's the notion a lot of people Yeah, some have. people go and some teachers those days advise parents that, oh, you see, your kid, um, because the education and the like, so you yeah. should go to the technical really schools. Trust technical me, the mathematics school. the technical guys do yeah. it's a in, those yeah. invest, in those technical investors mm -hmm. is extremely difficult, okay. even more than what those in the universities do. Okay. Yeah. So we have to understand the entire concept of the education. Let the parents understand that, okay, when the child is in the house, mm -hmm. education still continues. Yeah. Madam teacher, if the child is with you, this is what you're supposed to do. And define the framework of teaching to Super. the teacher. Mm -hmm. And the teacher gets to know that, okay, I am supposed to teach this. Yes. And so everybody has a part to play role. in this. Mm -hmm. And even those in the industry, they have to know that, see, if they train these people, they are coming to join us. Yeah. If they don't train them well, they are bringing rubbish yeah. to us. Yeah. So those in the industry will also be worried. Yes, of course. And currently, Europe, they are very worried because they don't have a good working force to join them. Mm -hmm. So now they are now looking elsewhere. How can we train people in Africa yeah, to come and join us? Come. Yeah, that's, that, that's what brings the migration. But we'll go there. But now we'll go for a quick break. And when we come back, We'll delve more into the conversation. Stay tuned. Are you a student seeking to pursue a master's degree program but is constrained by location, time or simply a hectic schedule? Are you a university or college unable to create or digitize your own master's degree programs due to expertise or funding constraints? AAU eLearn Africa LMS has the answer to all your online education needs. Develop your online master's degree programs now at a totally free cost on a platform that is highly customized and secured. The platform's analytic and proctoring feature, calendar with automatic alerts for activities and to-do lists, automatic marking of tests in a variety of formats, optional peer review of written assignments, plug-in feature, and several more features are only a few of its important functionalities. With the availability of highly skilled and experienced instructional designers, and other staff, universities are assured of online degree programs that meet international standards. Online education provides African universities with competitive positioning, scalable access, multiple nodes, multiple modes of communication, virtual collaboration and a wider selection of programs. Consequently, online master's degree programs have become a viable option for higher education in Africa due to challenges such as infrastructure, graduate output, and lack of funding. Therefore, partnerships and collaboration between enterprises and academic institutions are needed. Admissions are open for the online degrees with Rhodes Business School South Africa and Injala University Sierra Leone. Also, Institutions interested in partnering with us to develop their own online master's degree programs should submit an expression of interest. AAU eLearn Africa LMS provides low-cost online master's degree programs to all students and assists universities to digitize their existing master's degree programs as well as help them develop new ones from scratch. For any inquiries and submission of expression of interest, please email us at info at elearnafricalms.com or aaulms at aau.org. Don't miss out on this opportunity for a global and online educational experience. Welcome back from the break and if you just joined us, this is African Student Voices on AAU TV and AAU TV is the voice of higher education in Africa. So today we've been discussing preparing the student for the job market or the industry, and we've been having an interesting conversation. So welcome back from the break. 
I think before the break, we were talking about our curricular activities and how we can align them to meet the job market's demands. Now, I want us to talk about, I think in your submission, you spoke about internship. I mean, the, the school or the university is given opportunities to the student to get them the internship offers in the industry so that they are able to, I mean, get their hands on skills. But then how does, maybe let me come to you from your perspective in GIJ, since you are from GIJ, how does um, GIJ facilitate, I mean, students getting um, internship opportunities? Because sometimes you realize that, I mean, someone is doing um, journalism, let's see. A, a GIJ student is offering journalism, but they go and do internship in a different sector, mm -hmm. in a different industry. And then you ask yourself, okay, so when the person or when the student came for the letter to the industry or to the workplace, how, what role did the, the university play at that time? Because if you are, you are looking at um, building your career in journalism. I don't think you go off at journalism and then you want to do your internship in another, I mean, in a whole different industry altogether. So what role does GIJ play when it comes to facilitating um, internship opportunities for students? Okay, so um, from the little I know, mm -hmm. um, internship is compulsory in GIJ. Okay. Get to level 300 is very compulsory. Mm -hmm. So the school jacks the letter. But one thing I would say the school feels that is to ensure that indeed you are doing the what you have to do. Oh, okay, the internship in yes. the whole. Sometimes students just take the letter because they know people in high places. They just let them sign and then they'll be in the house. Wow. Yes. And then also, um, GIJ doesn't really matter if, or yeah, they don't really matter, or should I say care? if you do it in a media house or not. Mm -hmm. Journalism or communication is very broad. Mm -hmm. Being a communication student doesn't really section you to a TV or a radio I mean, station. Yeah. Communication cuts across everywhere. That's true. And as a journalism student, you are being trained, especially in GIJ. You can take a role of a PR person mm -hmm. and a role as a media person. Yeah. So communication cuts across. So you find most students doing um, their internship at financial companies, mm -hmm. at ministries of communication. Sure, that is for communication, but in different aspects, because in every organization, there is some aspect of communication taking yeah, place. Yeah, that's true. Because communication takes place when, I mean, my conversation, we are able to have a conversation mm -hmm. and you understand it. Yeah. An organization would like to put themselves out there. Yeah, for their that publics. Is, That's true. Protecting their image. They mm -hmm. want to just be out there. And because you're a communication student, they feel like you can communicate better because you know what you have to do. That's true. But I think the school should stand on their toes and ensure that when they are giving letters to students to do their internship, mm -hmm. they send a supervisor around. Yeah. At least a supervisor should go and check whether if the doing student it. is even dead. Yeah. What is the student learning? doing? Is the stud uh, is the student being sent to just go and buy stuff, mm -hmm. or is the there's student it, being doing that? Yeah, that's exactly. true. So is the student being in the office contributing, learning, mm -hmm. or participating in the process? Mm -hmm. But I think that's what most schools fail to do. Okay. They just send a letter. They feel they've done their um their portion. Their portion. Either you go or not, they don't care. At okay. the end, all they want to know is that it has been signed. Mm -hmm. I'll touch quickly on what Elifin right? yeah. said. Yeah. You made mention that um we have to break the system. And breaking the system, the parents has a role to play, the child has a role to play, and teachers mm -hmm. have a role to play. But I think I'll touch on the parents' role. Mostly in Africa, students or children study what their parents want them to study. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing. A big problem. Yes, yeah. because they are not doing it because they love it. They are They're doing, doing it because, because they've been forced to. Yes. So they don't really put in the enthusiasm or their passion to make sure they learn something or accomplish it. They just learn to pass. Mm -hmm. Because mommy and daddy said, I have I to, to do this course. <laughs> so I think it's high time the parents allow the, um, the, the, the children, children to make their decision, but be a guidance. Mm -hmm. Maybe my son wants to go into um, music. Yeah. 
are you sure there's something worth doing? Is this trying to is, is the course? Just... You know, uh, I mean, your child comes to you and tells you, "Mommy, I want to do music." Parents of today do oh, not yeah. see the relevance of it. Exactly, you understand. They want you to go and read engineering, the nursing, the doctor. But there is no the... passion in that. So when the child enters into the university, mm -hmm. oh, Charlie. Mommy said I should just come and do. Let me just read and pass. Yeah. So that my mommy will be, will happy. be happy. So when they are done, they, then they don't go into don't, the work field yeah. or the industry. That's they true. just deviate into something that they want. So I think your parents should also take caution on that. Because if we want to break the system, as Alec Green said, we all have a role to play. To play. So yeah. we have to play our role very diligently so that we'll be able to achieve this as a whole and not, yes. Okay. So let me come to you, Alipin. Do you want to counter something she said, um, or we can just move on? Yeah, I think I think she has she has said it. She has, she has said it so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we can move on to development of soft skills. You know, there are some skills that you cannot just um, develop. I mean, it's not about someone standing in front of the board and teaching you how to talk or teaching you how to, I mean, write how to do your presentation. I mean, you go to university and then you know presentations is a must. You have to learn how to present. The lecturer will not tell you. He will just tell you that, okay, we have a presentation. So do this, get your slides, and then come and present. So anyhow or anywhere you will learn it, you will learn how to present, come to the, the classroom, and then come and then present. Yeah. So talking about soft skills, how is UCC helping students develop some of these soft skills when it comes to meeting the demands of the job market? Okay. So um, before I answer that question, I mm -hmm. want to touch on something. Um, okay, you um, just remember something. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so I think sometimes we have to allow students to explore. We have to give them the chance to do whatever thing they want to do. We mm -hmm. watch from afar and then give guidance and yeah. mentorship to That's them. Right. So for example, um, in the job market now, I'm not sure any company will want to employ you just because you are um, a journalist, mm -hmm. unless for the radio and TV kind of people. Yeah. But if you are going, if you want to be a PR for my company or you want to be a PR in a tech company, the mm -hmm. tech company expects you to know some basic things that yeah. are tech yeah, related. Yeah, now, true. the manager will not tell you that, oh, okay, this is flatter. This is this, mm -hmm. this is that, this is that. Indirectly, the manager is just doing the PR work mm -hmm. and you are just yeah. doing the yeah. main publicity things. So um, as a professional, you need to find a field in which you want to practice. Yeah, to practice so if specialize. you want to specialize in agriculture, you have to start learning something in agriculture yeah. so that when you talk, mm -hmm. you talk like someone in that Who field and that no field. one is just feeding you. Sometimes you listen to PRs and you ask, um, what are they saying? What are they saying? Are they a lot sense? of things are missing in it. Mm -hmm. You just know that, yes, the person was able to um, bring the, the 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 words out but yeah. there's no meaning, meaning there's there's no words. comprehension to to that so okay. i think we have to allow people to explore mm -hmm. and know how we are guiding um them now yeah. as to what ucc is doing some departments are doing, are doing extremely uh, yeah are yeah. doing extremely well um um there is um vocation skill training there's one department called Vo yeah, votec okay. what votec does is that um they don't they have an internship that they allow their students to go and do Okay. But aside that, to Votech, um, this is um, not official, mm -hmm. yeah. But they assign their students to some guest house and hotels, so the students go there mm -hmm. weekends and go and work. Mm -hmm. Now, aside the skill the students are getting, they are being paid. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. That, but this is not something very formal. Mm -hmm. It's just it okay, something... go and work here, mm -hmm. get a skill. Now, the formal aspect is that um, there are there are there are sessions of their exams where they don't write on paper. You need mm -hmm. to cook. You okay. need to run people through the process. You mm -hmm. need to do it as it's supposed to be done yeah. in the industry. Okay. Now, aside all those, um, I can still make mention of some clubs on campus, UCC, mm -hmm. even though um, we are more of grid centered. Yeah. There are a lot of clubs on campus. And the Dean of Students and the SRC, they are doing um, quite well trying to register all those clubs, monitor what okay. those clubs are doing. Um, the debate society is doing very well, mm -hmm. Try, um, training people in um, um, oratory mm -hmm. skills, presentation mm -hmm. um, skills. Um, there are a lot of clubs, National Science, sorry, National Society of Black Engineers. Okay. Um, they train people 
even if you're not an engineering student, they can still teach you how to do basic, basic programming. There are lots of clubs on campus that um, touches on the life, that touch on the life of people. Mm -hmm. And then um, there are lots of clubs, but they all have different objectives. Yeah. Now, aside all this, um, currently the university is in an, in an agreement with AFOS. Okay. AFOS is a German company. Okay. And under AFOS, we have DigiCap. And DigiCap now has... Um, the partnership has expired, mm -hmm. but what is happening is that um, the university is now taking on that mantle to okay. train students in two fields, okay. business intelligence and data science. Okay. So it's a year program. You mm -hmm. go to the class on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. It's a flip um, learning. So okay. during the week, during yeah. the weekdays, you learn, they give you the materials you learn. Mm -hmm. And then Saturdays, you come for practicals. Okay. It's very okay. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, by the time you complete you have a competitive advantage mm -hmm. over yourself. I'm yeah. a testimony to that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I learned data science from um, DigiCup. Okay. Yeah. Um, aside that, there are a lot of clubs and a lot of things. Then adding to the internship, mm -hmm. um, I think 2022 or 2020, the university set up an office under a, a, um, academic affairs, directorate okay. of academic affairs yeah. um, called um, industrial liaison officer. Okay. And the duty of this industrial liaison officer is to make sure that he brings the industry mm -hmm. and then assigns students so to, them. to them. But as to how effective that is being done, I can't say okay. because yeah. you understand this has to do with resources. Mm -hmm. Yes, he has to go meet a lot of people. Yeah. And it's just pr the process. Yeah, so um, by time, I'm hoping that that unit under the um, Directorate of Academic Affairs mm -hmm. will be very enriched. Again, some departments are also doing very well. Mm -hmm. So my department, for instance, yeah. you cannot complete, you cannot pass through the department without knowing how to present. Yeah, and the good news is that <laughs> you are, we, are, we are almost, le we, are, we are usually under 40, like 40 people. Oh, okay. Yeah, the badge Not before us, they, are, they were 17. Um, we, were, we were 47 and okay. we graduated 30. 37 or 30, oh. 30 something. Wow. Those behind us, the number was quite low. low. Yeah. So imagine being 15 in the class mm. and the lecturer says five groups. So we yeah, need three people in a group. Three, three, Definitely you will have yeah. to present. But students don't just have to see it as they're presenting because of CGP or because of mm -hmm. grades. But right, there's a difference in, you see, sometimes you can have the experience, you can have the knowledge, you can have everything out yeah. inside. But for you to just articulate that, I know that this is a bottle. It's mm -hmm. a different thing. Yeah. So someone who doesn't even know that it is a bottle will say, ah, it's a plain container. Yeah. Then, oh, okay, because he is closer to a mm -hmm. bottle, they'll give him that chance. Yeah, so true. I think students themselves to have to take it up, even though the universities are trying yeah. their best, organizing yeah. seminars and programs for them. True. Students to have to take them okay. up. Okay. All right. Let me come to you, Presla. I think we'll shift a bit from there because I think he's done a lot of, He's digested a lot, yes. So now let's come to our technology and innovation. I mean, now we are in a technological world. There are a lot of innovations that are aimed to help students in their teaching and learning and equally prepare them for the job market. In GIG, or I don't know if you want to talk about GIG or talk in general, but how do you think technology can be incorporated into our teaching and learning in order to help us or prepare the student for I mean, the job market. Okay, so for GIG, I can't say much mm -hmm. because it's communicating. Yeah, that's true. Let's go into um, more of creation, like um, architectural or something mm -hmm. like that. So with AI, AI is a powerful tool. Yeah. AI is not something that we can um, say it doesn't exist or we we'll just diminish it, or sorry, diminish with time. Yeah. AI is part of our lives now. I think it's something we just have to agree. I agree too. So AI is not an enemy. I think that is the first thing I want to clear mm -hmm. because most students think AI is just there to take their jobs. Okay. AI is there to replace human beings. Mm -hmm. AI is there to assist. So students should just keep in mind that with AI, I'm able to do more or yeah. get an assistant to do more. So when it comes to creation, especially when it comes to like cars, inventing cars, there are certain things AI can do. There are certain things AI cannot do. Yes. Yeah. So students should just master the skill of just um, appreciating AI and then working hand in hand with them. Mm -hmm. Because if there is a note that AI could turn or a robot, 
pretend very well than yeah. I can. The robot will do it. Yeah. But I have to understand that as the robot is doing, I'm doing something that will make something. me unique. Yeah. In the job market, it's always about uniqueness. Mm -hmm. I think Elfim touched on that. Yes. If you're a PR for an agreed, tell you us that you know what it's about. Just don't come and read what has been written for mm -hmm. you. Likewise, if you are in um, innovation or the tech aspect, mm -hmm. AI is there, but what can you do different from AI? Okay. What can you use the AI for? Mm -hmm. What can you utilize the AI to yeah. achieve? So I think we should learn to work with the AI, accept it as its part. Mm -hmm. It's just here to assist, not to replace or not to entirely do everything, yeah. but it's here to assist. When we get that notion, mm -hmm. we'll be able to incorporate and not to solely depend on AI. Yeah. Like some of us use BAD to generate <laughs> a whole lot of things. Yeah. No. We should accept that, yes, it here, it's here to help. In communication, you can use AI mm -hmm. to generate, say, your script. Okay. But the fact that AI has generated doesn't mean it's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the thing with machines. Yeah. They will just you still do, have to do something exactly. to it. So as it has been given to you, you take it, then you apply or you include yourself to it. Mm -hmm. So we should just see AI as, AI as a friend and not as a competitor or mm -hmm. an enemy. I think when we work hand in hand with it, we'll be able to I mean, come up with amazing innovations that I think will send Africa to the next stage. Okay. Yeah. But then um, we're almost coming to the end of the discussion. Now let's talk about feedbacks and continuous improvement. When, when the student goes out to have their internships, go um, do their service or anything like that how is the institution i mean how are they able to get feedbacks that okay your students came here for an internship you know they did this they did that i mean from the industry's perspective so it teaches you that okay you as a school you need to do more maybe you need to add this to your way of teaching i mean your um how to deal with a student yeah. and how to let them improve so that next time, if the next batch of students is going for an internship, they are able to meet and not repeat that same problem. So how do you think we can help bring feedbacks to the institutions or how do you think the institutions can get feedback from their students after they have been able to go out for these internships and other programs? Okay, I think earlier when I said that mm -hmm. we should have people to monitor. Exactly. Monitoring is not just to mark the absenteeism of students mm -hmm. is to get feedback from the organization. Okay. So if you are able to send people out there mm -hmm. to go to say, sorry, I'm using communication because I'm from that background. That's fine. Anyway. So say the um, the, um, the person goes to TVT mm -hmm. and then a student did internship. So you have a conversation with a supervisor. Yeah. What did the student contribute? Yeah. Was it relevant? Does mm -hmm. this thing still play a key in the industry mm -hmm. or has something new come up has yeah. it changed then you record you have a meeting with your mm -hmm. deans and then your yeah. teachers so that they upgrade those, yeah. that is the problem sorry the problem with african um, um, education mm -hmm. we fail to upgrade mm -hmm. we are still learning the old yeah, things we are still and that's in what, our comfort zone we don't want to move ahead exactly and that's why we are lacking behind the thing is with um, GIG, the Dean of um, Journalism, mostly go to TVT and mm -hmm. we have some students there. So okay. when he goes and they are doing production, he sits behind mm -hmm. and observes. Yes. So when he comes to class, then he corrects mm -hmm. or even caution that when you go there, you don't, don't do, do this because yes. we don't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't use this style of writing anymore. When you go learn your house style, that is yeah. what will help you. So I think when we ask people to go, we, we should just put people in positions where they'll be able to collect feedback from mm -hmm. the industry and not just put it on the shelf. Yeah. Implement it and mm -hmm. make sure students are able to abide by it. Mm -hmm. And I think with that, we will get somewhere. Okay. Ali, do you want to add something? Yeah. Um, I, I, what I wanted to say was what she said at the latter. Mm -hmm. That is, um, after taking the feedback, we, should, we shouldn't just put them on the shelves. So I know um, that UCC in level 400, your first semester um, education, mm -hmm. they do off campus. I think some universities also okay. do mm -hmm. such things. So the off campus, so they do on campus and off campus. Okay. So the on campus is like the practicals to 
the off campus. So mm -hmm. the on campus, you teach your colleagues. Then off campus, you go and teach other people. So they assign you to a school and mm -hmm. you go and teach there. Okay. Um, what UCC does is that they have supervisors. So those supervisors go, I think, at least three times. They come and supervise you at least three times. Okay. Then they grade you. Mm -hmm. But aside the grading, the feedback that these people usually bring to the university, I don't know how the university utilizes um, them, but there's a bigger question. Mm -hmm. Every year, students write um, theses, yes. to dissertation, research exactly. works, and the likes. And some of these topics are from our economy. Mm -hmm. They've some identified problem problems figures. in the society mm -hmm. and they spent an entire semester or an entire year yeah. working on this. Mm -hmm. And then after that, what happens? What happens? <laughs> then yeah. the, 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 the best place we see the solution is on the shelf of your supervisor. Mm -hmm. He prints it and puts it there, yeah. probably because he wants people to see that, yes, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. he supervised someone. Mm -hmm. But our libraries without the books that have been printed by the whites or other people, mm -hmm. we still have a lot of knowledge because we ourselves, we've worked on a lot of things. Yeah. We did a lot of publications. Students mm -hmm. did a lot of observations. Yeah. We did a lot of research. But where mm -hmm. are they? Where are they? Yeah. Yeah. I think that that answers. I mean, that slightly answers your question. That Africa, we do not want to move forward. Whatever we do, we just leave it down there, and they continue to have. I mean, they are still hanging in the libraries on the shelves and all that. So I'll take your last words before we bring the conversation to an end. So I'll still be on you. So what last words would you want to share with us in helping institutions or universities prepare students for the job market? Okay, um, last words. Um, I think the, invest, the, the institutions, the industries, mm -hmm. they should see the interns as their co-workers mm -hmm. and they are also part of the training. Okay. If they don't want their HRs to be spending a lot of money on T and D um, training and development, yeah. if they come as interns, capture them, mm -hmm. train them, let them go back to the investing, let them learn the academics and the books. Yeah. When they come back, already you've taught, you've them. taught yeah. them. So you don't need to spend a lot of money again. Mm -hmm. Now, if they don't see themselves and if we don't allow these industries to also feel like we are part of the educational system. Mm -hmm. They will feel like, oh, after all, when the person is done with internship, the person yeah, will go back. go back. And well, who cares? Yeah, that's just for like, like three months. Yeah, I we, mean, we I need to let these industries feel like if you don't train the person, you are losing a lot. You are yeah. losing skill. So back. you have to pay someone's um, transportation from Europe or America just to, to come, come and, and do the job for you. That. Okay, so Priscilla, I'll take your last words. Okay, so what I would say is. Everything boils down to our mindset. Mm -hmm. Nkrumah is no longer here to mm -hmm. think for Ghana or, say, Africa. Yeah. It's left with us. Mm -hmm. So let's change our mindset. Let's approach things in a different way, or in a better view. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we'll get some more applicants. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Ellie Queen and Priscilla. Hope I got the name right this yeah, time. Okay, so thank you, viewers. It's been African Student Voices, and today we discuss preparing the students for the industry or job market. You can watch this conversation on our social media handles, Association of African Universities, on Facebook and YouTube. My name is Jemima Deladen Buche, and I've been your host. See you same time next time. Bye. <laughs>